In today's video, gents, 20 style and grooming accessories under $20 that I think every man should own. So as we're making our way through the video, make sure to keep track of the items you don't own. And let me know down in the comments, do you agree or disagree, should every man have these items? So coming in first, gentlemen, we've got the tongue brush, also known as the tongue scraper. The goal here is to dislodge bacteria on the back of the tongue. And this is something that, yes, a toothbrush, some of them are going to advertise they've got a scraper on the back. Believe me, this does not work very well. You want to actually have a tongue scraper or tongue brush that's going to get back there and dislodge that bacteria. When you've got all that bacteria back there, what's going to happen? You're going to get bad breath and that can also lead to, you know, tooth decay and infection. You want to get in there and dislodge all that bacteria so that when you use a mouthwash, you brush your teeth, it does a better job of cleaning your mouth. Next up, let's talk watches. So, if you ever bought a watch, you love the look of the case and the dial, but that watch strap, uh, maybe it's the quality, maybe it's not providing much contrast. You know that a better looking watch strap would just add so much. So, that's what you need to do. Go out there and get a watch strap that's going to level up your watch. When it comes to straps, the issue is there's so many options. Maybe you want to go with the fabric, you want to go with a muted color, you want to go with a brighter color. All of these are relatively inexpensive and what's cool is you can buy some of them even in packs. And don't forget about leather, silicone, rubber. These options are great. They're usually going to be a little bit more expensive than the fabric. But what I like about this is you can find still some pretty good options under the $20 range. Now, you can go into any jewelry store and actually get this done for a few dollars or a watch repair shop. But I would recommend that you just simply get a nice tool that enables you to do this. The only thing you got to be careful is don't scrape the case. Because gents, this can make a huge difference. When you get the right dial, the right case, the right strap, you get that perfect combination. It can turn an average watch into an amazing looking watch. Next up, we've got the Steptic Pencil. This is an anti-hemorrhagic, which is basically it stops bleeding. So, whenever you get a cut on your face, you're shaving. Guess what? You apply this right there. Don't use the toilet paper. This will do such a better job. Next up on the list, gentlemen, I've got chassis. Now, I probably could have said ball powder, but in the next 10 to 15 years, those two words are going to mean the same thing. Why? Because these guys are the leader when it comes to the best ball powder on the planet. Now, Chassis is the sponsor of today's video and I've been talking about them for years because I believe in their product. They use amazing ingredients. When you go look over on their website, you're going to see just everything right here is safe to use on the boys. That's what I love first and foremost. Next up, it works and it really does. They've got this Hydro Shield technology. So, basically, when you put this on the boys, it is going to protect them throughout the entire day. If you deal with any type of chafing, if you have any type of swamp crotch, this is the product that's going to solve your problems. And I also love how these guys are innovating. So, they didn't just rest on the laurels. They had a great initial product, but what they decided, hey, let's create an unscented version. Let's create an ice version, which has a little bit more of the cooling feeling if that's what you're looking for. And they've got a wide variety of other products. So, you their shower primer. This is for those of you that really have a lot of sensitivity down there and you want to actually have something you can apply in the shower. Chassis is talc and aluminum free and this bottle right here is going to last you over four months. Gents, I'm linking the chassis down in the description of today's video. Click on that link. Go check them out. You've got to love a company that saw a problem and they created a deck of products that all work together to solve that one problem. Guys, they've got you covered. Go check them out. Next up, a good quality pen. I like to have a pen that's got a bit of weight. For 20 bucks, you'd be surprised what you can find out there. One area that I like to bring in, tactical pens. I find a lot of them under that $20 point and I just love being able to take something like this and yes, I have taken this on an airplane, have not had it taken since. It does work as a pen and if I need to, uh, let's just say, break through some glass, it's got me covered. Next up, we've got trimmers. Now, this one in particular is for the nose. You can find some that actually have a variety of heads, all well under 20 bucks. This one right here, more for the sideburns, the back of the neck. This right here is going to save you a lot of money because you don't have to go to the barber all the time. This one is just going to save you a lot of embarrassment because you're going to get rid of those nose hairs. You should be using a trimmer like this at least once a week. Next up, we've got keychain tools. Multi tools are cool, but most of them are going to be well over 20 bucks and TSA loves to take these things. So, I wouldn't recommend these ones right here. But what I would recommend is looking at a variety of options out there when it comes to a $10 to $15 simple multi tool that's going to fit right on your keyring, has a nice little cutting you know, edge, has maybe a screwdriver, has a bottle opener. Those are the things I find most people use. These come in very handy and I like to have a few of them just on different keyrings on different vehicles. 
vehicles. Next up, we've got the shoe tree. I know, not sexy, but you know what? This is going to save you tons of money because it's going to make your shoes, the upper part of your good dress shoes, last twice as long. Why? Because it's going to retain its shape and they're going to help pull out moisture and they're going to help kill odor. Those are the things that you're going to kill your shoe. You're going to have to throw it out. But if you use and leverage good shoe trees, guess what? Your shoes are going to last a lot longer. And speaking of making your shoes last longer, you getting more miles out of them, make sure to change out those laces. Yes, a lot of times people stop wearing shoes because the laces make the whole shoe look ratty. So, just get some new laces at least once a year and bring in a variety of colors. Have fun with your dress shoes. Now, it's going to make them more casual, but you know, you can change out the lace pretty easily. Have some options here, but change out those laces. Next up, let's talk sunglasses. So, I've talked about the classic styles before, Aviators, Wayfarer, Clubmaster, but let's talk specifically about a style that I haven't really covered and that's going to be sport glasses. So, you've probably seen me wear these in a video or two. What I like about these is when I go for a run, they're incredibly lightweight. They don't even, it doesn't even feel like they're on my face and these are going to be sport glasses that just do a great job of not weighing, not really getting in the way. Now, when I'm out mowing my lawn, if I'm riding a bike, I'll wear a pair of wraparounds. Relatively light, these are going to actually provide protection and do a good job. Now, let's talk about lenses. The thing that everyone's going to focus in on is polarized versus non-polarized. What polarized lenses do is they protect your eyes from light coming from a variety of sources. So, if you're out on a lake, you probably want polarized lenses because light's going to be hitting you from a wide variety of angles. But just because something is non-polarized doesn't mean it's bad. It just simply means it's non-polarized and that it's not going to block light from all those different angles. Now, another thing you're going to see are colors. When you've got brown or orange lenses, those actually enable you to see better detail. So, I've got some brown lenses that I like to wear when I'm driving. Next up on the list, I think every man should have a business card holder. Why? To be able to protect your business cards, keep them in one place. Here's the deal. If you're handing out a business card, you don't want it to be folded. You don't want it to be bent up, torn. You don't want to have markings or some type of stain on it. No, you want it to look great because it represents you in this person's mind. You want to really make an impression and that's where a calling card or a business card can come in very handy. And let's not forget the money clip. Money clips keep your cash looking good. They keep it organized. Oh, you're not a cash guy. You only use cards. Well, make sure that you've got an RFID wrapper or an RFID protecting wallet. What are these things? They actually prevent your card from being read. And yes, there are people out there that have readers that they can basically pick your pocket. They can go in there and pull money off of your credit card using those readers. So, make sure that you've got protection for your wallet. Pocket squares and handkerchiefs. I think a well-dressed man has both. What's the difference? Pocket squares. These are made to go into the breast pocket of a jacket and they're going to be made oftentimes from silk, from very luxurious materials. They can be made from cotton, but these are really for show. Now, the handkerchief, this is for blow, which basically means for blowing your nose, this is going to be made from cotton. It should be durable. It should be washable and it's something that usually goes in the back of your pocket or on an inside pocket on the jacket. Shoe trees. Know what they are and use them. So many men ruin the back of their shoe because their foot's going in and out and they're just crushing and bending the back part of that. So, use a shoe tree. It's going to make it so much easier, especially when you're putting on a Chelsea boot or another type of boot. Maybe it's a little bit tight. You want to make sure to use that shoe tree. It's going to allow the foot to go in and out so much easier. Now, with the quality shoe, I love a leather sole, but one of the issues with leather soles is they become slippery when it gets wet. So, guys, make sure to go out there, look for the very inexpensive, just add a bit of traction to the bottom of your sole right there and it's going to prevent you from slipping and falling on your backside. And let's talk about edge dressing. So, hopefully on the upper part of the shoe, you use a conditioner, you use a polish to protect the upper. But what about the sole? What about whenever we get discoloring here, especially on black? You use edge dressing. This is, this is a lot of dye in here, so be very careful with it. Once you get it on your fingers, it's very difficult to get off. But this is going to dye this a very dark black, bring it back to its original look. So, let me ask you two questions. Would you like to save a few extra minutes in the morning? The second question, why don't you shave in the shower? The reason for most men is I would cut myself because I can't see what I'm doing. Well, guess what guys? They have mirrors that are designed to be in the shower and are going to be anti-fogging. Apply a little bit of lotion and just get the job done right in the shower. 
Next up, a variety of different hair products. As men, we fall into habits. We find one product, we like it, we use it again and again. You should go out there and try something new. So if you're using the putty, maybe look at something that's more wax-based. Maybe bring in a pomade. Maybe look at all the different options out there and you'd be surprised at what you can get for well under 20 bucks. So you have that old sweater, you absolutely love it, but guess what? It is showing its age, it's pilling all over the place. It looks like it's coming apart. Well, guess what? Get a sweater shaver, a tool like this, you just run over, it's gonna make the sweater look like new. Next up, we've got collar stays, also known as collar bones. These are going to keep your collar points looking great. But a lot of guys are confused about should you go metal, should you go plastic? Now, quality wise, it seems like metal would be better, but here's the issue with metal. If you forget and you leave them in the shirt, when you wash it, you can damage the shirt. For that reason, I think plastic is a better option in most situations. Next up, we've got brushes and combs, and the issue here is that most men never explore. They never actually look at what the different brushes and combs can do for their hair. So what is this brush going to do? It's a paddle brush, and notice it's got a little bit thicker of a bristle there. This is actually going to give a pretty good combed down look, but then you bring in a brush like this, this is really going to push down the hair and do an excellent job giving you a very slick look. Something like this is going to add a bit more texture, and you've got other brushes out there that can be used with hair dryers. Now a comb. A lot of guys, they want to try travel lighter. Well, have you ever tried putting your hair together with different types of combs? You're going to find the thickness of the teeth and the length of the teeth can all have an effect on how your hair looks. A simple catch-all. At this price point, leather ones are going to be relatively small. Other ones made from different materials. You can find them actually very inexpensively. What I like about this, I put it right there on my desk. I always know where my phone or my keys are at because they go right into it. And let's talk about the tie bar. What I like about tie bars is that most men don't even use them, yet they're very functional. Why? It keeps your tie in place. So you're going to be going out to a meal. You don't want your tie falling into your soup. Guess what? Use that tie bar. So where to actually wear the tie bar on your tie? Okay, so let's break a tie into four parts. That bottom half, don't wear the tie bar down there. That top quarter, don't wear it there. It's going to be in that second quarter right there where you want to find a place for the tie bar. The boutonniere. Wearing a flower in the lapel. I tell you, most men can't pull this off, but if you know the history, if you know that men going off to combat would have this pinned onto their lapel to remind them of their loved ones and how fragile life is, all of a sudden you understand the history and that this is something that any man can pull off and look great. So what video to watch next, gentlemen? How about this one right here, what not to wear? In this video, I talk in detail about clothing items that you just want to avoid. They're just, they're just going to make you look bad. Avoid these items, guys. I'm linking to this video right in the description.